Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 25th of February. India plans evacuation of its citizens from Ukraine through alternate routes. Pakistan witnesses public outrage against inflation, rise in street crime. And power cuts continue in Sri Lanka amid fuel crisis. And now for all the details. With Ukraine closing its airspace after Russia launched an all-out invasion of the country, India's foreign ministry said it has sent teams to countries with land borders with Ukraine in a bid to assist the evacuation of around 16,000 Indian nationals. Hungary confirmed on Friday it will open a humanitarian corridor for citizens from third-party countries like India, letting them in without visa and taking them to the nearest airport. With Russia launching an all-out invasion of Ukraine following a declaration of war, India's foreign ministry said it has sent teams to the land borders with Ukraine in Hungary, Poland, Slovak Republic and Romania to assist the evacuation of around 16,000 Indian nationals while the Ukrainian airspace remained closed. Hungarian foreign minister on Friday confirmed his country will open a humanitarian corridor for citizens from third-party countries like India letting them in without visa and taking them to the nearest airport. The Indian embassy in Kyiv in its advisory on Friday called on Indians to coordinate with it to leave the country by land as evacuation flights remained suspended in Ukraine. Family members of the Indians in Ukraine comprising a large number of students prayed and hoped for their safe return back home. Yes, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi late on Thursday spoke to Russian President Vladimir Putin over phone and called for resolution of disputes through dialogue. Till the last reports came in, Russian troops had entered the Ukrainian capital Kyiv, while over 130 military personnel and civilians had been killed in the fighting as explosions and gunfire rocked major cities. Putin says it's all to stop the Ukrainian government from committing genocide against its own people, an accusation the West calls baseless. The US, Britain, Japan, Australia and the European Union have slapped more sanctions on Moscow, including a move by Germany to halt an $11 billion gas pipeline with Russia. Moving on. As economic conditions in Pakistan continue to worsen, locals in financial capital of Karachi have claimed spiraling inflation has paralyzed their daily lives and they're now fed up of Prime Minister Imran Khan's government. Reports suggest that rising inflation has also resulted in street crimes in financial capital Karachi. Amid the rising inflation rates and external loan defaulting in Pakistan, locals in financial capital of Karachi have raised concern that it has become extremely challenging to survive and they are unable to even afford basic commodities. Locals lamented that the frequent hike in prices of fuel and gas has fueled anger amongst them and they are fed up of the government's failure to control inflation. According to the Statistics Bureau, Pakistan's inflation rate rose to 13% in January, the highest in two years. चीज की कीमत ही जो है वो बढ़ जाती है मतलब आटे से लेके घी तक वो हमारे घर की रोज की जरूरत की चीजें जो है हर चीज की कीमत जो है वो इसमें बढ़ने की तरफ जो है वो जा रही है और जाहिर सी बात है इसके खिलाफ गुस्सा भी बढ़ रहा है नफरत भी बढ़ रही है और ये है कि ये हुक्मरान मैं समझती हूं कि खुद शायद अपनी कब्र खोद रहे अभी पेट्रोल की ये पोजीशन है कि जो मजदूर तबका है जो हमारा कंपनी में जाना चाहता है बाइकों पे वो तो अभी बाइकें उन्होंने रोक दी है अब वो बेचारे अपने बसों से सफर कर रहे हैं जलील हो रहे हैं ख्वार हो रहे हैं इस तरह के हवाले तो तो हम ये इमरान खान की हुकूमत से मुतालबा करते हैं कि लिहाजा पेट्रोल को कम किया जाए Said Murad Ali Shah, Chief Minister of Pakistan's Sindh province and leader of opposition PPP, recently said that the deteriorating financial situation has resulted in street crimes in Karachi with rise in armed robberies. PPP Vice President Sheri Rahman on Thursday appealed all Pakistanis to join the party's anti-inflation Long March rally on February 27, saying it is not only for the sake of politics, but for the survival of the economy and the common man. More on news from Pakistan.
Politicians, activists and netizens across Pakistan have hailed Thursday's court verdict that sentenced Zahir Jafar, a U.S. national of Pakistani origin, to death for rape and murder of Noor Muqaddam, daughter of a former diplomat. The incident in July 2021 had sparked widespread outrage across the South Asian nation. Politicians, activists and netizens across Pakistan have hailed a court verdict on Thursday that sentenced prime suspect Zahir Jafar, a U.S. national of Pakistani origin, to death for raping and beheading Noor Mukaddam, the daughter of a former Pakistani diplomat, crimes that sparked outrage across the South Asian nation. Investigators say Jafar, member of one of Pakistan's wealthiest families, lured 27-year-old Mukaddam to his home in Islamabad in July 2021 and held her there for two days and murdered her. Two of Jafar's employees were jailed for 10 years each on charges of abetting the crime. Opposition PMLN party leader Maryam Nawaz said it is reassuring that beasts in human disguise will realize that consequences can be grave. While PPP leader Nas Baloch hailed the courage of Noor's family, netizens on Twitter said justice has prevailed. बहुत डिफिकल्ट पेनफुल फेस था लेकिन ये था कि मेरी फैमिली मेरे भाई बहन सब मेरे दोस्त सब मेरे साथ खड़े रहे पाकिस्तान में नहीं पूरी पाकिस्तान की माएं बेटियां मेरे साथ खड़ी रहीं और बाहर मुल्कों से भी सारे दुआएं करते सारे मेरे साथ खड़े रहे क्योंकि ये मुझे किसी को बोलने की जरूरत नहीं थी लोग इतने उनको ट्रॉमा से गुजर रहे थे सारे लोग ताकि वो वो चाहते थे इसमें जल्द जल्द ये सजा हो और इसमें जजमेंट जल्द 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 हो। Hundreds of women are killed in Pakistan annually, and thousands more are victims of brutal violence. But few cases get sustained media attention, and only a small fraction of perpetrators are ever punished. In news from Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan authorities have imposed rolling power cuts for four to five hours island-wide as its worsening financial crisis leads to the lack of sufficient fuel stocks for power generation. The island nation of 22 million people uses coal and petroleum to generate over 60% of the electricity supply that the country needs. Sri Lanka has been suffering a severe shortage of foreign exchange, leading to widespread power cuts in recent days after being left unable to pay for fuel shipments. A Sri Lankan utilities official said there were not enough fossil fuels to operate power generators on Thursday after the country experienced a power cut that lasted hours the day before. Business owners in capital Colombo were seen using candles to light up their stores on Wednesday. School at the Nivadu, school Nivadu in the Gurakara, Division Pan Nivadu. Again, the thing we are part of a product by Halatamitian. We are through the current day of Obama, Tawati thing of it. Amar, we are okay, Podivia Park and in recent days, Sri Lankans have had to deal with long lines at fuel stations and widespread power cuts. The Public Utilities Commission of Sri Lanka or PUCSL also approved the request made by the Salem Electricity Board for island-wide power cuts on Friday, which are scheduled to last for more than five hours. The short-term reason is that uh, there's no uh, enough supply of uh, fossil fuels to run the generators to generate power. And therefore, we need to go for the present uh, power cuts in Sri Lanka. The island nation of 22 million people has paid 35 million US dollars for a diesel shipment on Wednesday and has another large payment due this week, an official said, as the country struggled to import fuel for power generation and to keep its transport system running amid dwindling foreign exchange reserves. Moving on. India and Nepal on Thursday agreed to form a joint task force on a proposal to construct new hydropower projects as a joint venture. The agreement was signed during the ninth round of meetings led by the Secretary of Nepal's Energy Ministry, Devendra Karki, and his Indian counterpart, Alok Kumar, in Kathmandu. The task force will have three members each from both the countries. The two-day meeting that ended on Thursday reviewed the project and transmission line construction of Arun 3 hydropower project.
Both sides also agreed to increase the capacity of energy being imported and exported through the interstate 400 kilovolt Dhalkebar Muzaffarpur transmission line. India took a positive note of the proposal floated by the Nepal Electricity Authority to export 850 megawatts of electricity to India before the coming monsoon, according to officials. Afghanistan was plunged into crisis in August after Taliban fighters drove out a Western-backed Afghan government, prompting donors to hold back billions of dollars in assistance for the aid-dependent economy. Though the economic crisis hit the entire country, the effect was disproportionately felt by women. To provide job opportunities, a bakery in southern Kandahar has employed over 50 women hit and broken by poverty. Millions of Afghans have been plunged deeper into poverty since Taliban takeover in mid-August last year, which resulted in disruption to aid programs and deteriorating food security. To provide job opportunities, a private company that produces bread has provided employment to 55 Afghan women who bake 5,000 units of bread a day, which are sold by the company in southern Kandahar city. The bakery was started by Hidayatullah Azizi, a member of the local business company, the Azizi Group. Azizi believes that creating job opportunities for needy people could help reduce poverty in Kandahar province and in Afghanistan at large. <laughs> Women in Kandahar have been facing economic hardship, particularly the widows who had lost their husbands and bread earners during decades of war. 40-year-old widow Almasi used to beg for arms on streets of Kandahar city. Today, she is grateful to be employed here. <laughs> According to aid agencies' reports, more than 22 million out of some 35 million people in Afghanistan are facing acute food insecurity. But a bakery like Aziz's has provided a sliver of hope. Authorities of the Wildlife Department in India's Jammu in Kashmir have made arrangements for food for the endangered Kashmiri stag, locally known as Hangul, in Dashigam National Park following snowfall in the region. Once found in high-altitude regions of northern India, Hangul is now confined to only Dashigam National Park in Kashmir. Authorities of India's Jammu and Kashmir Wildlife Department have made arrangements for food for the endangered Kashmiri stag, locally known as Hangul, in the Dashigam National Park. With the valley receiving significantly increased amount of snowfall this year, it has been very difficult for the Hangul to get proper food in the upper reaches. Wildlife authorities are taking extra care to ensure that they get enough food. Fresh vegetables and solids have been placed in specific hotspots across the park for the deers. Although most wild animals adapt to the changing environment, authorities are being cautious. हम यहाँ पे rock salt भी डाल देते हैं, जो rock salt जो बड़ा like करते हैं, लिक करना, और उसके साथ साथ जो vegetables होते हैं, जैसे carrots, cabbages आपने देख लिए, carrots देख लिए, तो ये भी सब हम इसमें provide कर देते हैं। तो जो हांगुल है, हम इसे endangered species तो ये है ही, तो हम चाहते हैं कि ये इसी कॉमी पनागा में जो है बनता रहे, इसलिए हमारे सालों का एक प्रैक्टिस रहता है, यहाँ पे हम इनको food provide करते हैं in the harsh winter sir. The hangul is the only surviving subspecies in the Indian subcontinent of the red deer family native to Europe. The magnificent mammal has been declared as a critically endangered species by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Known for its giant antlers bearing 11 to 16 points, the hangul has been hunted for centuries and its habitat has been destroyed, leading to its population plunging. Once found in high-altitude regions of northern India, the Kashmir stag is now confined to only Dashigam National Park in Kashmir. It has been considered as one of the rarest mammals in the subcontinent for the last six decades. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.